over here at Frank's in the shop since we ain't over at the Gold Show because of the scorch. Dredge's fungus fungus. We're going to set up this blue bowl. It comes out to the banjo pan. We're going to do some of that. And then we got the new Miller table or the dream table that Paul made for me. Got it all shimmed up in the shop. And I brought black sand. And I left my vial of four ounces of beach gold at home because I'm an idiot. But Frank had some material left in his shop of some black sand that was all trapped on a bunch of magnets. And then we're going to run this material and see what gold we can pull out of it. So we're going to dump this into the blue bowl. And then we're going to dump it into here. And then we're going to see what's that happens. So, and I'm going to go ahead and pre-soak this so it ain't so bad. And then I'm uh, then we'll run a little video. Some of this on here. Get an idea. This is all black sand that Frank was crushed that was stuck to magnets in the shop. He has informed me that he gave away a bunch of material the other day in Oma. Um, uh, so that was really nice of him to, to give away material. And he could have gave it to me instead, you know. I'm much more needy than anybody else. So there we got some material in the blue bowl. I'm actually going to turn this up a little bit. There we go. What we want to see is about three quarters. What, what, what we want to see with the blue bowl, when you're running material that's got a bunch of fine gold in it, you watch this horn. And as that's spinning, if you see any gold on that horn, you're going too fast. And what I showed in the last video, we're about three quarter throttle. And about, yeah, about three quarters of an inch to an inch right here. And if you see any gold on this horn, that's a big giveaway. You're flushing gold down there. And that's what the banjo pan down there is blows to catch. So what your goal is to go as fast as you can and not see gold on this horn. So if you see flecks of gold on that horn, you're going too quick. So, got some chunks of something. This isn't, Frank sold all his prospecting equipment. He didn't even have a screen. So some of this is a little bit above, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, above eighth inch mass. So we may have a little couple of boulders going down this. This is all black sand that's been rolled and cracked, and he's had in a bucket that was stuck to a bunch of magnets. So we took the, all the black sand off of the magnets, and um, uh, basically our, look, there's a bowl. Oh, that was a nice piece of gold. Let's we'll see if the mat captures that. So I saw a piece of gold. There it is, right there. Come over here, Billy. See that right there? There's, that, there's a piece of gold right there caught in the mat. Yeah, so we found some gold. A little bit bigger than the beach sand stuff, but that's what I was going to kind of uh, debut is how good this guy does with the beach sands. I'll do another run at home when I get home. I'll set up in the shed and I'll run that material. Do like a nice little video, put it to YouTube. Um, we'll put the rest of this material in here. So, one thing nice is that I'm, uh, with the with the, the bowl below it, you know, if we have any kind of slopping and we're doing any kind of disturbing, we're going to um, uh, capture that on the banjo pan down here. So if we had any gold that was going to escape, you know, we got our second defense, so to speak. And we're going to turn this up a little bit. It kind of went down a little bit. It kind of, you know, once you adjust for the pressure, once the feet flies out, Looking off some big chunks of rust here. So you can see that this miller table goes pretty quick. I'm gonna sit here and just run my fingers up and down this edge just to knock off that pile of sand. There's some gold right there. Well, oh, it just moved a little bit. But what's nice about this is that this is gonna catch your this is gonna catch your round and grainy gold and not just your flat gold. So this is gonna catch the whole spectrum, meaning that. You know, a miller table usually catches the flat gold, but all the round BBs, round BBs would roll off a plate, and wiry gold would roll off a plate, and all your coarse grain gold rolls off your, uh, your, your miller table. So this table actually, with these micro mats in it, caps the whole spectrum, which is really nice. But yes, we do have some black sand left over, so you need to find a cleanup. Now we're here at the blue bowl, if you go too quick, we're a little high, but that's okay, we'll turn it down a little bit. Um, uh, at the blue bowl here, 
with the mat in it, we're just basically cutting cons. We've got a whole bunch of cons, we've got a whole bunch of material, we don't want to wait days to get it, so we want to do the cut. And there's a couple people who have done some cuts, and their testimonies are basically, I had all this material, I was worried that the bowl was going to lose a bunch of gold, I cut my material, and so I got my basic concentrates, and then I was able to pan them out. And I got my gold. And then I went back to look and see how much gold I lost out of my blue bowl. And he goes, to, and I ran some material slow at a regular speed. And for that little bit of gold that was lost, for how little was in there, for how long it took to run it, he goes, the material is basically worthless. So it's doing a pretty good job, but everybody's gold is different. You know, there's some people's gold that's a lot fatter, flatter and finer than others. That's going to be a little bit more sensitive. And most people's gold for a blue bowl is pretty safe. You know, you're going to be able to run that and capture it all. It's just a lot. For some places that have the fly coop stuff, Yep, there's that, that piece of gold that fell out of that black sand, still sitting in that cell, hasn't moved. Nice flat piece of gold. See, that's, the, that's what's so nice is once it gets caught in a cell, it don't go nowhere. There's two or three pieces of gold in there. Yeah, yep. And so, and got some chunks of iron in here. This is basically sweep alloy or shop, miscellaneum or shoponium because it's got like, you know, freaking shavings and stuff in there, you know, Frank's finest pay dirt is what we'll call it, you know, from his shop floor, we're teasing him. <laughs> oh, here's a piece of gold up here, yep, right in the first cell, ah, I bumped it, right there in that first cell. Mm -hmm. I got it. Yeah, you know, here's another piece of gold right there, see it kind of moving around, right there, tip my finger, yeah, so we got some gold out of that, so that's kind of cool, you know, and here we got this, this the water kind of got clouded up, so it's hard to see into the blue bowl and see what's going on. That's kind of a boner because there's so much rust in the water from this um, uh, that that iron sitting for so long. But everybody, this is this is a uh, customer-inspired product. I did, I did not come up with this. This wasn't the plan for it. It was a super slick blade. The cube ran a lot quicker, and people started running finishing material over this micro mat. And this is a, a customer-inspired. Product. So I mean, customers are building this. Painter people are are, buy, are building their tables and selling them. Paul's building this and selling it. And so this is kind of neat that we got a product that is basically customer driven because it solves a problem that's in the industry where you're at the Miller table, you lose all your fine coarse gold and you got to rerun it and go after your stuff. And plus, every time you brush, stuff moves down, wiry stuff, you know. And the Miller table is a little problematic, even though it does a good job. Miller table is a great tool. Um, uh, so the, just wiping off all the stuff that's on that plate. And, but this kind of is, makes it kind of multifunctional. Oh, there's another piece of gold showing itself in one of the top cells. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, it's cool beans. So you let it run for a while, it kind of cleans out, and, and we'll do a pan out. Take a look at what's in here. Too bad it's too cloudy, you didn't see in there. There's a piece of gold in there. There's actually three pieces I can see. Cool. And that one. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if I see one. Maybe if you zoomed in on something, I can't see. Oh, I can see it from this side oh. right here. You can't probably see it because you're on the other side. Cool beans. Or right there. Oh, now I see it. Yep. Mm -hmm. What I thought. So this, uh, this design, okay. the, the, blue, the banjo pan with the micromat in it underneath the, the blue bowl is kind of an Ed and Jesse thing. I don't know which one of them came up with it. I kind of put those two all together in one blob all the time, Ed and Jesse. It's muddy. One of the two came up with the idea. And I thought that was pretty great. What's nice is you have this nice nugget catch. So if anything, you know, you did have some big flakers, you probably have a little bit of drop in pressure zone to capture that or, or a piece that was uh, half quartz, half gold. So your specific gravity is different, so it would capture in that, that low pressure zone, you know, and fall in there and stay in there, and then you'd be able to see it. Yep. So, but really, you should only run probably, you know, my opinion is you should be at least 30 mesh by the time you drop into the blue bowl anyway. You shouldn't be have the bigger chunks of sand. But we just, we're running with what we dealt with. So anyways, so that's the deal. We'll do a clean up here on this mat, and then, I'm, uh, then we'll take a look at what's in there. And that's it. You can find one. So here's the gold we caught off the Miller table. That was in that material. Frank sweep alloy stuff. They say he was gonna throw away. So we had all these magnets. There's a whole bucket of magnets there. 
and underneath that plastic even that all had magnetic material stuck to it that he had laying up in there some black sands because this was back in the day when they were um, uh, separating black sands with magnets so it was usually trapping the gold and so what we did is we took the we took the magnets that had the, the, the material on it and then we pulled the material off to split the spin it off and dropped them into the pan so that's how we got the material off those magnets and that's the gold that was trapped in there pretty cool so this is what we got out of the blue bowl. That's a nice one. And then we got that fine stuff on both sides. So that's what we got out of the blue bowl. We're going to start floating now. Yeah. He's going to go get some soap and we'll finish paying this and suck wow, it out. That is a uh, There's the gold that came out of the banjo pan mat. So we lost a couple flakes right in that. So there they are, and a couple little specks. And that's the big bounty that we missed.